fly, envious time, till thou run out thy race. Call on the lazy leaded stepping hours, whose speed is but the heavy plummet's pace. And glut thyself with what thy womb devours, which is no more than what is false and vain and merely mortal dross. So little is our loss, so little is thy gain. For when as each thing bad thou hast entombed, and last of all thy greedy self consumed, then long eternity shall greet our bliss with an individual kiss. And joy shall overtake us as a flood when everything that is sincerely good and perfectly divine with truth and peace and love shall ever shine about the supreme throne of him to his happy making sight alone when once our heavenly guided soul shall climb. Grossness quit, attired with stars, we shall forever sit, triumphing over death and chance and thee, O oh time. What? Oh, I'm sorry, I must have fallen asleep. I was so bored by that intro. Ooh. Oh, snap. I said it. I dissed the intro to this game. I'm just kidding. Everybody loves that intro. I like the intro. But speaking of being a joke, my name is Effing Controller, and we're going to play Silent Hunter 4, which is what this game is, in case you uh, don't know how to read. Um, Silent Hunter 4 is actually kind of a return to form for the series, because the first game cleverly named Silent Hunter 1, is about uh, the American submarine campaign against the Japanese in World War II, and that's uh, the same campaign that we're going to be playing here in 4. And it's a good little game. I don't like it quite as well as Silent Hunter 3, although it definitely does have some advantages over it, especially with regards to graphics and things like that, but it's still a good little game, and I'm going to play it because, I mean, otherwise I wouldn't play it at all if I didn't like it. So, yeah, it's just logic. Um, I'm going to be using a mod called the Real Fleet Boat Mod, um, it's kind of a super mod in the same style of GWX for Silent Hunter 3. And really, if you're going to be playing uh, playing Silent Hunter 4, you're either going to use the RFB mod or you're going to use TMO, or I guess you could play vanilla. Vanilla, to me, is just silly because you can get into gun battles with destroyers and usually beat them. Um, but with Silent Hunter 4, I like RFB a little bit more over uh, the Trigger Maru overhaul, which is the other mod. It, it just is a little bit... I mean, it does basically changes how damage is modeled, it, um, adds some different AI features that make it a little bit more difficult. TMO does some stuff that is a little bit too heavy-handed for my tastes, but it's entirely up to you if you want to play this game. Give both of them a try, give Vanilla a try, and see what you like playing with, because ultimately it's just about you having fun. And we're going to have fun together as we play this zesty little game, this salty, sweet, umami-flavored game. It's actually going to be very umami flavored because we're fighting against the Japanese, but I am totally on a major, major digression here. Um, I also have a mod installed called the uh, Run Silent, Run Deep campaign, and that um, can be modded into any installation of Silent Hunter, uh, depending on what super mod you're using. It adds another um, kind of historic layer to the game, uh, making it basically a seven layer dip of submarine awesomeness. Um, it adds historic convoy routes, it adds historic battles, and makes basically some of the pathing a little bit more realistic and some of your missions a little bit more realistic. So I decided I would add it, and uh, I like it so far, so I'm going to keep it. Um, let's go ahead and just get started. I'm not going to really talk too much about my thoughts of the game until I actually 
reach points when it makes sense to talk about them. So you can see we have a German campaign option. But we're not going to do that just yet. Let's go ahead and do this. And my name is going to be Captain Ken Masters. Uh, we're going to start the campaign uh, right before Pearl Harbor here. We're actually going to put to sea after Pearl Harbor, but whatever. And as far as our base, we have the option of sub pack, which is Pearl Harbor, or we can say Task Force 35171, which is Manila, and that's where we're going to be based out of. As far as the subs that we have choices for here in Manila, we can be in the S-18 class, which is popularly known as the Sugar Boat class. We also have Porpoise, Salmon, and Sargo classes. All of these were interwar designs, uh, meaning that they were either put to sea after World War, well, after World War One and before World War Two, so they're a little bit outdated. With uh, the S-18 class here being particularly outdated, these were put to sea uh, after 1918 and before 1925. They are old and they are shitty, but I'm going to try sailing them, and it's probably going to be a miserable failure. But let's give it a try, anyways. The difficulty is going to be set to easy here, but I'm going to go in later and change it a bit. Uh, and as far as renown, we don't have any options there. We have to start as a nobody. So let's go ahead and get going here. Here are our operational orders from Commander Submarine Force. Wow, that's a great name for a guy in the Navy. Hi, I'm Commander Submarine Force. Nice to meet you. Oh, that's just his title. I figured it out. So let's see. To Lieutenant Commander Ken Masters, Commanding Officer of USS S-38. Your boat and crew have completed training and are now ready for combat operations. Review your enclosed operation order and make your boat and crew ready for sea. Will do, Commander Force. Alright, so now we have to watch a fairly mediocre intro, so brace yourselves. Gentlemen, as you already know, we are at war. I quote the President of the United States. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. The attack has effectively eliminated our entire battleship force for the time being. As a consolation, it has failed to catch any of our aircraft carriers in port, while the submarines and fuel reserves have escaped unharmed. During the past year, the Japanese military was engaged in a seemingly endless war against China, badly needing oil and other raw materials. Since we halted the trade with Japan, they schemed to seize the oil and mineral-rich East Indies and Southeast Asia. A Japanese attack into the Indies, Malaya, and the Philippines was expected, and plans prepared for it. But obviously, we have not prepared enough for an attack of this magnitude. The attack against Malaya has materialized yesterday, and last night the Japanese forces also attacked Hong Kong, Guam, the Philippines, and Wake Island. This morning, the Japanese continued with an attack on Midway, the Japanese offensive is extending throughout the Pacific, with a submarine force left mostly to itself. We need to act accordingly. For the time being, we will conduct operations as follows. Boats based in Pearl Harbor will patrol in Japanese home waters and also reconnoiter the Marshall Islands, as it's presumed that Japanese forces are massing in that archipelago for a second attack on our bases. Manila-based boats will deploy to guard the vital island of Luzon, against approach by enemy forces. Individual patrol orders will be received from your commander. Wow, sounds pretty urgent. That guy was pretty riled up. But, um, yeah, we're here in Cavity Naval Base. Consult a dentist. And um, here's our office. And it's a nice little office. We've got some shit on the floor there, but in some box full of mysterious objects, I'm sure. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at our sub. Um, as you can see, we can't really upgrade anything, and uh, one thing I want to point out is that we have a bunch of people here with names, and I would love to assign new names to these people, which I will do externally. I have to actually edit the save file in order to add people from our previous career in Silent Hunter 3 into the game, so that's going to happen. Um, can't make any upgrades to our ship. One thing about the sugar boat that I should point out here is that we do have a 4-inch uh, deck gun, but we do not have any anti-aircraft guns. So I'm not going to, you know, make a repeat of our last career in Silent Hunter 3 and try to fight against planes because I simply have no means to do so. Um, one thing that is definitely really, really important about this ship, though, is that it uses a Type or a Mark 10 torpedo. And you can see that the range is pretty low. It's 3,500 yards. It's not really very good. But compared to the Mark 14 torpedo, which was the prevalent torpedo used by the Americans in World War II, 
it's actually pretty good at this point, so I'm not too uh, upset about having to use these. They do have range limitations, though, so we'll have to work around that, but that's pretty much all I wanted to point out about this little boat of ours. All right, um, let's go to the difficulty here really quickly. And you can see it's set to Realism 100, and that's despite having the no external view unchecked. That should make the game technically easier, but whatever. They just made the decision to not include that in the Realism calculation. We also have no map contact update unchecked. We will get very, very, very limited map contact update information through, uh, uh, through the map. And that's a part of Real Fleet Boat that um, I don't know if I necessarily agree with how they implemented it, but basically you have just this one layer of information that you can get access to and it's very limited and I'll just show you guys, it's probably easier if I just show you rather than try to explain it. But as you can see everything else is checked, we have pretty much full realism in all other regards. Actually, did I save that? Well, let's apply changes. Cool. Okay. So let's go ahead and just see what our mission is. Let's just click through that. Two Ken Masters. Proceed at best speed to Vigan via Lingayan Gulf and conduct combat patrol and reconnaissance. Remain on station for 12 hours in the Lingayan Gulf within 20 nautical miles of its center point. Make daily reports as necessary to TF3. Okay, so that's just north of Manila here. It's not going to take us too long to get there, I imagine. And uh, I guess we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, we can start either outside of the harbor or docked. Uh, I prefer to start docked, at least for this patrol, just so you guys can see what Manila looks like, because don't want to spoil anything, but we're not going to be able to see it for very long. Let's go ahead and get going. Oh. Sir, all, stop. all right, everybody, welcome aboard. One, Here we are in the nine, command room. Eight, you can range, see my men are diligently five, awaiting bearing, orders. Three, um, four, you know, just three, looking at gauges and range. looking at the blinking lights. I'm sure this guy is on some kind of psychoactive drug. Keep up the good work. Um, yeah. So you can see already this is a very nicely modeled game. It's got excellent graphics as far as I'm concerned. So it's just a nifty uh, nifty looking game. But let's actually go topside here real quick. And we'll take a look at Manila. You know, nice and pretty. Let's go ahead and get going. We're not here to sightsee though. We have to kind of fight a war, I guess. Um, the sugar boat and all other American subs move at standard speed as opposed to the U-boats which usually move at a head two-thirds or whatever. So that's something to bear in mind. This is the most fuel efficient setting for these boats. And let's actually take a look at our boat. It's not exactly the prettiest boat on the sea, but it, you know, it's got a certain charm. Uh, the sugar boats were also called pig boats. And I think it was mostly just because they were kind of filthy. All of the, uh, submarines that were uh, part of World War One, and shortly thereafter were called pig boats just because they were kind of considered to be undesirable to uh, serve on. And the sugar boats certainly had their share of problems. They're not exactly very quick, they're not clean, they're not comfortable. Uh, they're very, very hard to maneuver in. Uh, New course, two, when you six, think of like nine. the Type 7 U-boat that we had in Silent Hunter 3, just forget about everything you know about that because this thing maneuvers very slowly and it also, most critically, dives very, very slowly. To go to periscope depth, uh, under most normal circumstances, it takes about a minute and a half, as opposed to, you know, what was it, like 40 seconds with a Type 7? So yeah, it's definitely got some disadvantages. It's not a very modern design and it's not very, uh, not really suited to the task, although it does have these. Gosh, is it cold in here? All right, anyways. The sugar boats were actually kind of considered like the second string boats of the U.S. Navy. Uh, they had to end up serving in places like the Aleutians, which I don't know if any of you guys have seen a little series called Deadliest Catch, but you'll know that the ocean up there is pretty violent, and these boats were absolutely not suited to be up there. There's all kinds of really terrible stories about their service up there. Basically, a lot of people um, getting injured just by being on the conning tower, thrown up around, and you know, breaking their noses and arms and things like that just because of how violent the sea was. Um, one boat was almost um, sunk because of all the water that was coming through the uh, hatch here. It just, they're, you know, one of those boats that you just have to kind of like because of how completely ill-suited they are to the task at hand. But it's all we had really uh, for a lot of the war and, well, it's not really all we had, but it was definitely part of the 
backbone of our fleet, and we had to make do with what we had for a while. So, the sugar boat, it exists. <laughs> That's basically its advantage. All right, so let's see. We have a mission to go to uh, Vigan, I think it was. Was that up here? Yeah, so we're going to have to go into this uh, gulf first. Let's take a look at our actual mission orders. So we have a primary objective of reconning this gulf here, but then our secondary objective is to go to Vigan here. And we have to spend 12 hours here, and then we're going to swing up here and do a quick reconnaissance. So let's plot a course. And I have to admit, I don't really like the interface of this game quite as much as Silent Hunter 3, but I've, I've been learning. I think I can make do. So we're going to plot a course out here. Just kind of cruise up this way, go up this way. We don't really have to worry about zigzagging so much in here, but we eventually will. So let's actually do a little compass line here. I think it said 40 nautical miles. I am using Imperial units just because that's what I'm used to. That's something like that. And we'll have to do a little bit of, you know, gussying up of that course. I'll probably just have us go like this for a little bit. And we'll go from there. We'll uh, plot our course accordingly from there. So who knows what we're going to run into. I haven't really patrolled in this area uh, at this point in time, so we'll see. I'm imagining, though, that we're going to run into quite a lot of Japanese uh, air cover and um, possibly some surface uh, forces. We'll see, because obviously the Japanese are going to invade the Philippines. We, we know this from history. It's kind of one of the spoilers of playing the game, being an American and knowing a little bit about history, is knowing that... Uh, the Philippines are basically invaded immediately, and uh, we're going to be at a serious disadvantage here. But we're going to try our very best not to die. All right, so that's the plan. I'm going to just cruise along here, and it's probably going to be fairly uninteresting. So you'll probably see me again when we're here in the Gulf. You know what? I actually I misspoke. I'm obviously using metric units. Kilometers are metric, not imperial. Durr. But uh, also, I wanted to take a moment to show you guys something. You'll remember in Silent Hunter 3, if you watched that, which you should, um, whoa, that uh, I usually went at 256 time compression, and that was because uh, the game didn't really model things very well if you went much further than that. This game can go to hilarious time compression. We're at 4096 right now, but we don't want to do that too much because you will run into situations that the game uh, won't necessarily notify you about, and you'll be immediately sunk. So I do like to try and stick around 256, especially if I'm not going a long distance. So that's kind of going to be how it's going to work. Um, but again, we're still cruising towards the Gulf, and I'll pick things up there. Good morning, everybody. It's about, well, just shy of 6 o'clock right now, and we are in uh, Lingayen Bay, or Gulf, the Gulf of Magic and Wonder. And, uh, you know, cruise bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Post and watch here, looking around for some Japanese shipping. But uh, I actually do have some success to report already. I managed to rename uh, the crew. And that was kind of a pain in the ass, but I did it. Um, as has been said so many times after so many Friday nights. Uh, here we have Veronius, Corporal Cabbage, not one of ours. Sieve or Sev, Sev, Zuv, 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 Zuv. Zub, 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 zub. 82. Uh, kill cam hair. Welcome back. That's not one of ours, but the name Wilmot is kind of ridiculous. Cleaver Kilvania. Uh, uh, Mr. White Dragon 8. Sonic Destroyer. Hagen Mathis. Lockman 775. Dan And I'm pretty sure that that's really how he wanted it spelled. I don't. I actually can't find where he actually requested to be on board, so maybe this conversation happened in my imagination and this name came to me, and it's unpronounceable regardless. That's all you guys really need to know. And you know because I wasn't able to pronounce it anyway, so what am I talking about? I'm a little bit over-caffeinated right now. Leroy57! I changed it so that he's not a German, just so we don't have any spies on board here. Rooster Dentures. Um, Kurt Steiner. Suspiciously German name, but we'll deal with it. Uh, Armadillo. Clowder. Some of these people are new, so welcome them aboard. Give them the old sweaty welcome to S38. I had to look at, like I can't remember. Uh, Soapy, anyways. Juicy Rump. Did I say Hensa? Well, Hensa, Soapy, Juicy Rump. In that order. My god. Lost Lancaster. 
Hot Race Car 123, Homer K11, Matthew Hoover, Trunk Monkey, Whiny, Ock 9, Dark Bar! <laughs> you can't say that name without smiling or choking yourself. Wolfie Wolfgang, Delonian, Influx Nufki. Made it so that it's a Polish name instead of a German one. Um, Spitzenhund. Oh, that's a problem. Very suspicious. Um, Lethal Death Cat, of course. Senator Von Faust, because we don't have any aristocracy here in America. Um, Spice Weasel. <laughs> uh, Landon Jenkins is not one of ours. And I think that's it. So there are still some slots. And I do apologize because I basically had to kind of just randomly assign people uh, because... I wasn't able to use a tool like Silent Hunter 3 Commander for this. I just had to go into the save game and manually type in the names. And I wasn't too sure of who I was associating with each uh, position here. So if you didn't get something that was to your liking, too bad. Um, meanwhile, we're in Lingan Gulf, and we're actually, according to... Oh, we already did our turn. Well, that's a shame. Uh, I guess I can just do a quick turn anyways. It doesn't really make a difference. So... This gives me a moment, really, to kind of talk quickly about how this boat dives. And I think I mentioned before that it dives a little bit slowly. And I'm going to show you guys that it does dive a little bit slowly, although it's not really as bad as I was thinking. So I'm going to give the order to go to periscope depth and start the timer at the same time. Are you ready for this? I'm going to push two buttons at once. Yes, sir. Whoa. Periscope depth. Yes, sir. It's incredible. Dive. Dive. <laughs> I like the sound it makes. It's <laughs> fun. Alright, so we're just beginning the dive. We're already 15 seconds in. And if I recall correctly from Silent Hunter 3, we would usually be starting to actually get under now. And we actually... It does appear that we are here, too. Because the deck's awash, and I better get under. So we're about 30 seconds in. The Type 7, of course, does dive a little bit more quickly, but it's a smaller boat. It uh, displaces less water, so... Why am I at the radar post? I don't I don't want to be here. Let's go back to command. Very good. Uh, and we are... The game says we're underwater, but I think we're still technically visible. Yep. Current the mast is going One, under, the zero. conning tower is, and all that good stuff. And we are now just about fully submerged. So it takes about a minute, which is not, you know, great. Um, it's not the optimal uh, amount of time to have us do that, I guess, but um, we'll make do. Now, the other thing about this is that when you're underwater, you in one of these boats, at least, you want to be yes, going sir. at a head two-thirds, because you're going to just go yes, through sir. your battery power at a ferocious speed if you don't. So we're going to reduce to two-thirds, and we still move at a respectable four or five knots, if I recall, so that's not too bad. Um, let's take a listen on the hydrophones. Now we're hearing something, but that is the noise of our own engines. And the thing with uh, RFB and I believe TMO, uh, the two super mods, is that your sound guys really don't seem to hear that well. And that could just be based on the fact that I don't have very experienced sound guys yet. But um, I'm going to have to do a lot of checking by hand uh, in terms of doing sound checks. So it's going to be a little bit tedious at times. Let's get rid of the clock there. Um... So it's going to take me a while, but fortunately I'm going to edit most of that out so that you guys don't have to watch me doing this over and over again. Um, so yeah, we're actually already... Actually, I did a dive before, so that battery... That's not the battery rate at all. That's the amount of gas that we have. <laughs> gas. Oh boy, I'm really on a tear right now. I need to mellow out here. But anyways... That's kind of how this is going to work. It's going to take me a while to work through this uh, search pattern here that we've got set up. And I believe we're only supposed to stay on station here for 12 hours. So once we do that, we're going to head back up this way to Vigan. So, I'm just going to go through my normal search pattern, and if I find anything interesting, I'll let you guys know. That little talk I just gave about my men being incapable of using the hydrophones reminded me of something, and that is that in uh, Silent Hunter 4, your men actually have individual stats for each area of expertise that's needed on the ship, I guess. So, for instance, uh, sensory here is what would be used for the hydrophones and for uh, standing watch on deck. Uh, obviously, influx, 
is a very sensitive man. He uh, is very receptive to stimulus. And uh, but also he sucks at using weapons, and he's just a complete bonehead when it comes to things that are electrical. Shockingly enough, ah, 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 ah. Uh, I I honestly am not the best person to ask about how these work, but I do know that basically every single um, uh, specialization and everything depends on each one of these to a certain degree. Like the people in the engine room, first and foremost, they need to have high machinery, and then secondly, they have to have high electricity. Um, people in the torpedo room similarly have to have good weaponry. Um, and then I think secondarily good machinery. I think machinery is overall probably the most useful of all. Um, but that's just kind of how it works in um, in this particular mod. Is that every task has a primary and then a secondary um, stat that it draws on. So that's how it works and hopefully we'll get you guys to improve because some of you guys just really just stink. Just awful like this Delbert K. Walker. Look at him. What a doofus. He's an apprentice seaman. <laughs> <laughs> Semen. All right, I'm going to stop jabbering. Uh, we're going into another turn here, and I'm going to be listening, but so far it's been very calm and quiet. All right, we've actually already met our objective um, for patrolling in this gulf here, so I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I'm going to do a couple of turns and uh, see if I can hear anything, but so far it's been pretty quiet here. So I'm going to plot a course to go to Vagan, and I already plotted out a... 20, roughly, it's not really even close to exact, but it should be enough that we are in the immediate area of Vagon. So I'm going to put us here, and I don't know if we should go straight for the town or what. Maybe I'll zigzag us towards it. That looks like a good idea. Something like that. And then from here we'll go out to C, and something like this kind of a confined space here so we have kind of limited options but we'll start with that and see how it goes we actually only need to be there for 12 hours so we'll work with it um but yeah i'm gonna actually i might get rid of this here too yeah that's exactly what i'll do okay so we're on our way